Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to see a rule-breaking opening in the first degree. And it's played by Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against Rajabov, Timur Rajabov, in the 2012 World Blitz Championship. Now, Magnus Carlsen is a fun-loving kind of guy. He does experiment with his openings. He does play weird and wacky openings. The faster the time control, the more wacky, in fact. Here in Blitz, round 27, he plays A4, the where opening. <laughs> Should Rajabov have bewared the where opening? Let's see. E5, it's a classical response. It does stop rook A3. You know, the bishop could take. So E4, does does this opening have any micro upsides, what I call micro upsides? It does control the B5 square. So maybe if you put a piece on B5, you can expect it to be more protected than usual because of the pawn on A4. That's a kind of micro upside as well. But also this other one, sometimes if, if the bishop wasn't eyeing a3, you know, maybe the rook can lift aggressively. We see knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, knight f3, bishop b4, and now bishop b5. Both sides castle, d6. So central control has been respected. And this is a fairly decent position for white. It's not a major, major concession to have a4 included. If bishop takes c3 instead, d takes, knight takes e4. In fact, we see here a perk of a pawn being on a4 that white can take on e5 without losing a piece. And this would be fine for white. Well, the rook was protecting the bishop anyway, but sometimes it might be useful anyway this this is usual to be able to take with a takes with active play for white so d6 was played d3 bishop g4 and now knight e2 not minding double pawns here g file is strong potentially if king h1 and rook g1 so black actually played a6 inviting white to double the pawns now knight g3 knight h5 h3 so white's inviting doubling the pawns here. Knight takes, f takes. Both sides are trying to play dynamically with their pawn structures. We see g4, bishop c5, king h1, queen e7, and now queen e1. So this structure reminds me of a Spassky Fischer game where, where Fischer was black and played a similar kind of move with the queen to maybe g, you know. G, G3, but it was G6 in this game I was thinking of in the 1972 match. It's a very interesting pawn structure. We see knight h4, a nice outpost square, f5. So this is a very, very interesting position. G6, this does invite bishop h6, but is it controversial? Will this bishop actually be trappable? We see rook b1, bishop b6, b3, d5, knight retreats back. Rook e8, and now this nifty queen g3. So there's a pressure point on e5. Sometimes g5 might be useful to undermine e5. We see bishop c5, rook b e1, d takes, d takes, bishop d6. But, you know, this is a shattered structure on the queen side. We see rook e2, c5. This is a nice outpost square as well on c4 potentially. We see knight d2 looking at that outpost square. Bishop e6, queen d3 looking at a6, and it's here black plays g5, which it seems to be very ambitious to try and potentially in some way trap this bishop. It seems a bit of a long-winded way potentially of trapping the bishop. In the meantime, white has some moves. But if rook a8 had been played, as an example, rook e f2, queen g3 with the idea of g5, and this would be very, very pleasant you can see that the pawn structure has been fragmented in the extreme in an extreme way with things dropping off with an advantage for white here for example like this it's a big advantage for white very very nice position so we have uh, g5 so that's pretty committal losing a6 king h8 trying to trap the bishop maybe but after knight c4 we have bishop takes c4 queen takes rook g8 but now h4, yeah, the bishop's not going to be that easily trapped. We have g takes. If rook g6, then h takes. And here, rook takes f7 just wins a rook. <laughs> Technical problem here. 
a technical problem indeed. And if queen d7, yeah, the, the bishop's not uh, a, you know, a problem piece there uh, at all. So h4 saves the day here for white. G takes. G5 playing on on this f file. And in fact, Rajabov is not impressed by his position. After this, it seems the game ended here. Either he resigned or it was lost on time. I'm assuming, actually, he may have just resigned here. It's it's pretty bad, actually. If queen d7, okay, we could stop h3. And what does black do here? Black's waiting for rook takes f6. It's a big, big position for white. And queen f1 would be uh, crowning. Um, a crowning move on the f file with the past a pawn is just a winning position so this is just absolutely winning with an idea of rook f7 and that bishop lurks around delivering a checkmate here if this continuation helps deliver a checkmate so anyway the game ended here after rook f2 rook e f2 very very interesting so beware of the where opening and yeah, Magnus Carlsen is a bit of a fun lover, actually. He's in the spirit of this whole philosophy it, throughout this course of fun loving the openings, especially the faster time control. Why not have fun? That's what the faster time controls are there for. Chess is a sort of form of entertainment, pleasure. That's what most of us play chess for, not necessarily to become world chess champion, but even if you do become world chess champion yeah they they do hold now more and more of these blitz and rapid events for the professionals so we're also in an age you know rebellion against the machines and you know magnus playing systems like the london system is another kind of big motive behind the course you know systems emphasis emphasis on systems not having to memorize tons of theory you know just you want for me chess is about one's talent one's skills not how much one memorizes and magnus you know ca he encapsulates a lot of these values fun loving spirit and being strong in especially the end games and the middle game and uh, you know so of course he uses the london system to be top grandmasters he wants to get his talents to shine through not his memorization skills as much for openings so and this game in blitz is just you know, I, I would love it if I was inferior professional. I love playing in these blitz and rapid tournaments more than one day personally. But that's just me. I think it's a lot of fun to be had in these. And uh, Magnus clearly did have fun in this game with the wear opening with A4. I think the spirit, we can, we can use the spirit of fun and entertainment in our own chess. It wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> but this is on a good day. I think when you have, to, when you look at these, you you should think, like uh, John Spillman says sometimes, you know, on a good day, under a certain weather condition, a certain time of day, or on a on a bad day, you know, things can the same opening can have a good day and it can have a bad day. This was a good day for the wear opening. Okay, thanks very much. Hi guys. I hope you enjoyed this openings video sample from my openings course, which is actually extremely high rated right now as of the, the recording time of this video. It's 4.8 with 257 students. It's got quite a, an interesting structure that you may never have seen before in an openings course. I actually have three different tiers for what I call systems. So I go over these systems, which you can use quite often independent of what the opponent is doing so they're great for the lazy like me that want to like enjoy chess without having to learn tons of theory then i go uh, over the traditional openings and then you know with three tiers there the traditional openings and then i have another section on the gambits so tier one gambits that you can use and these are great for spicing up your games and creating tactical uh, activity for tactics and combinations so there's three tiers of gambits and I end with some conclusions and philosophical points but yeah it's quite an interesting structure many people have remarked that they really like that structure and it is pretty novel you won't find that structure in many opening courses so there's systems standard openings and gambits so everything I really enjoy about chess in terms of opening theory I've tried to express here in this course 
So I hope you check that out at Kingscrusher TV slash chess openings. That has a big discount as well with it. Thanks very much.